way. <laughs> well, good morning. Welcome to South Florida. One of the few places in the United States where you can pull up to a residential canal full of Mountain Dew cans, trash bags, and also fish. Life, teeming with life. This part of the United States holds some of the most dense, not only saltwater fishing opportunities, but freshwater fishing opportunities that lie tucked away in plain sight in suburban neighborhoods like we're gonna be fishing today. That is our first fish, maybe our third cast. Hopefully this sets the tone for the rest of our experience down here. That's a little large mouth to take. <laughs> I don't know what I have, but I have something. What is that? What the hell is that? No, it is a little snake. No way, dude. <laughs> that is crazy, bro. That is actually crazy. This is one of Florida's most invasive fish species. This fish right here is the poster child for fish that do not belong in Florida, probably adjacent and tied with peacock bass. These fish, I believe, are introduced through markets. A lot of people brought snakehead over here because they taste good and they're also predominantly found in pet stores. I believe that kind of phase has died off with these guys starting to take over Florida waters. But that is an interesting fish catch. Caught on a little tiny Guggen panfish plastic on the mini dart, the micro dart. Such an interesting fish. These guys have an incredible ability to survive. They thrive just about in any sort of ecosystem. They actually can breathe air, similar to how we do it. So if they're in an area where there's not a whole lot of dissolved oxygen, or if they're in an ecosystem that's like shallow, muddy, and hot, they can still survive and thrive. And that's one of the reasons why they're so widespread here in Florida. And we caught one our first day, pretty sick. Watch this too, he's gonna release himself. Come back down there, buddy. He's gonna squirm his way back into the water. There you go, bud. Very hardy fish. I know for some people it'd be like, why would you do that? But they are extremely hardy fish and ultimately they're not supposed to be here. So there's probably an element of controversy for me even just to release that fish back into the, uh, into the wild. But we are fishing residential ponds. These are mostly man-made. And for the most part, these snake have taken a, a pretty strong grasp on this part of North America. You can, you can actually find them in the Potomac River too, a different type of snakehead, but equally badass. And I believe they get a little bit bigger too. But that's two different species. One native, one non-native. Today's mission goal is to show you what lurks in these waters. We've got fish that breathe air. We've got fish with teeth. We've got fish that can survive in salt, in fresh water, all spread throughout this part of Florida. And our hopes today is just to catch them and show you how wild this fishery can be. Are you at the pond across the street? I'm at the pond across the street. We just caught a snakehead. No way. Go around the back and in the middle okay. of Airbnb, you'll see all the rods. Just grab some rods, grab whatever, come down, meet us, and we'll do a bit of fishing at this pond. Yeah, all right, I'll be right there. All right, cool, see ya. All right, all right. That was fanatic. He just so happens to be in Florida the same time we are. I mean, he practically lives down here. He's from Texas, but he's always down here filming videos for his channel. So we're gonna actually link up divide and conquer and figure out how to catch these fish today. Luckily, we've got great conditions. We've got two very experienced anglers and we both have the drive to make today's video happen. So this is so cool, man. I mean, coming from Illinois where everything is mostly native up there with the exception of Asian carp, it's just nice to come down here and experience the wildest, like hands down, the wildest form of fishing. Anyway, he's grabbing some rods. He'll meet us down here, but he's gonna be joining us on today's urban fishing mission. Oh, what the hell is that? What is that? Oh, large mouth. Oh, nice. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, it just snapped my rod. No. Should not have high sticked that. No, he's gone. Oh, I look. Oh. Why? Why, dude? That's what happens when you travel with rods. They get dinged up and you, you're ultimately not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to boat flip two pounders in. That just happened. There we go. There's something. A little largey. What do we have here? Little largemouth. Buddy, you don't stand a chance in here with the snakehead. A little busy, micro busy. See you later, guy. Anything and everything. Oh, wow. Aggressive little dude. The large one here are really fired up. Oh, wow, he just spit up a little tiny minnow. That's probably one of the reasons why I'm getting bit on this tiny Guggen soft plastic. Buddy just cranked the minnow. Also, I lost my tail. See you later, bud. I wanna show you guys how we're catching these fish today and what I'm using and I'm packing light today. All we need on today's session is like two spinning rods. If we go to some heavier pads, maybe we upgrade and chase after some bigger fish, 
I might switch to a casting, but for the most part, two spinning rods, one light, one medium slash heavy. And in my bag, I got everything from swim baits, cracks and craws, to our new panfish, soft plastic. If you guys haven't seen this stuff yet, it is so good. And it's not just for panfish. Like I like using baits that necessarily aren't meant for what they're marketed towards. So we created these four, obviously crappie guys in mind, bluegill guys in mind, even trout. But taking these small Guggen soft plastics to waters down here in Florida can open up the opportunity to catch literally everything. The one in specific that I'm using is probably my favorite. It's the dangle dart. It's a 2.5 inch dangle dart. It's very similar in design as the old one. Of course, it doesn't have that little hook slot for EWG hooks. It's just solid plastic. But what I'm doing is I'm taking the dangle dart and I'm threading it on a Guggen panfish jig head. If I can get the damn thing in my hand. There we go. Little like white 16. Little white 16th ounce jig. Little white 16th ounce jig head by Guggen. Just threading that on there. Super simple and easy. Got 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. I'd like to go a little bit lighter, but there are some fish in here with teeth and I don't want to break off. So that's all it is. It looks like the tiny little minnows that you see scurrying around the bank all throughout Florida. And it's one of the reasons why the fish are throwing themselves at this bait. If you want to check some of these out right now, they'll be linked down below. Use my code John B to save 10% off your entire order. Even if you don't want to pick some of these up, which I would highly recommend. But even if you wanted to get some just bass gear, maybe a hat, maybe some line or some of the Guggen apparel, that will all be linked down below. Use the code John B. You support the channel, you support trips like this, and you keep things going for us. So thanks Advance, and let's keep fishing. Holy do you see that? Is that a clown? No way. Can, Can you see it, Caleb? Yeah. Pretty sure it's a clown. It's got the mark in it. Huh? Oh, he just had it. Oh no, a different one. Oh, dude, there's a clown right next to him. Oh my god, I swear, I swear. Yeah, cast right there. He's just sitting there. Let me release his bass. He's got a nice large mouth. I was casting on a clown. A clown? Yeah. Hang on, stand where I'm standing right here. See, yeah. see that like patch of grass right there? Uh -huh. Like 10 yards out in front, or no, like uh, five and a half yards out in front of that. It's pretty big. It's like, I don't know, 15 inches. Is that what that is? Yeah. Do you see it? You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. I was just, dude, I was just, dude, there was literally nothing there. There was no clown. <laughs> no, I don't know what you're looking at. I was just kidding. Are you an Oscar? <laughs> yeah, there was a little Oscar down there, like a little, little one. Mine cichlid. What do we have here? Brenton's the fish ID expert. Mine cichlid? That is a carpet croaker. That's a <laughs> sucker mouth carpet croaker? Yep, sucker mouth large nose carpet croaker. Nice, dude. Wow, these guys have like kind of spines everywhere. I feel like I've definitely caught a mine cycle before, but it's been a while. Actually, I think I've caught one of these. Cast and concrete. Yeah, no. Cast and concrete, Florida. Oh, Florida. Florida. Yeah. Oh, oh, cat. See, I'm so stupid. <laughs> Apparently, I haven't had coffee today. Yes, I definitely have caught one of these before. And I actually think I've caught one of these in Brazil, too. Species number three. Mine cichlid. Time to send them back. Anything and everything in here, man. Species number three, non-native fish species number two. This is crazy. Man. Honestly, if you if I see one next, you should take a crack at it. Cause I if I hook one, I'm done. There's one right there. Oh my god, giant, 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 giant. Dude, there's so many snake in this. Oh, what is that behind it? There's a fish right. There's a large one right behind him. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Pause. Yeah, you throw it. Yeah, he got it. Oh, that was so insane. Well, the snakehead just went under a largemouth. It's still right there. It's right there. Oh, yeah, you will. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got him. Dude. Oh, he came oh, up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Hooked him freaking twice. That was so ridiculous. And there was a snakehead under him, too. That was a big snakehead. There's actually giant snakehead in here. Yeah, dude. They keep taking off so shallow. Like That's okay. We can get him on the way back, though. Oh, yeah. A little large mouth. Dance in the dark. These little large mouth are keeping us busy as we're looking for invasives. I had no idea we booked a freaking Airbnb right next to a canal full of some pretty big snakehead. Oh, well, he's got a nice large mouth. Brent's hooked up too. Oh, that one's a, that's a decent one. It's a snakehead. No way. No way, bro. There's my large mouth. Brenton's got a snake and I'm gonna toss this guy back. These things are insane. I think this is the first snakehead I've ever caught. Are you serious? No way. Ever. Wow. I've never, I've never like specifically targeted them. 
Wow, it's a good one too. I think one time on River Monsters they were talking about how one ate a kid. Um, <laughs> was, am I? Is that the wrong episode? Am I thinking? <laughs> no, no, this one played with a kid. Oh, it played. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, well, I knew there was a reason why we, we invited Brent along with us. He's uh, he's good for at least one snakehead. <laughs> I'm just playing. That was actually a really good fish and potentially your first ever snakehead. If you guys want to see the, the whole thing go down, check out his channel. But that was ridiculous. I, Caleb, I think, saw something bust by those rocks and then. Brenton got ahead and cast the swim bait right there up on it and saw the, saw the wake, saw the, saw the V wake and just crushed it. So cool, bro. Also, I want to note that where we're fishing is literally a puddle. Like it is a, maybe a foot deep, only 10 feet across, and there is just fish everywhere. And we've seen a lot of big snakehead. Although this canal is absolutely loaded, the best part about it is it dumps into a much deeper, bigger pond. So there's no telling what's the end of this rainbow. Bet you anything there's one under here. Oh, giant oh, wake. What, what was that? Snakehead, 100% snake snakehead. It might have been yeah, what you've that, had. That's what my, look. Yeah, yeah. that was a snakehead. They what always, they seem to like love these trees. Like when we went with Ryan, every time we'd go into like, look, there's another huge wake right there. There might have been multiple, man. Dude, did you see that? I felt it, that was a big fish. What was that? What was that? That sounded like someone threw a baseball at my lure. Brent's hooked up. Largemouth? Yep. Nice, I just got absolutely, I got my pants, I got deep pants. I don't know what it was, but it was a fish for sure. Just in the open water too, like what the hell is going on here? It's my second missed bite. That was ridiculous, dude. It literally, saw, oh, I got some behind me. There we go. Just came off. That was a snakehead, 100% a snakehead. I just lost him. 100% snakehead, just lost him too. Yep, no, I heard the pop. I felt the pop. Damn it. That was a good fish. Shut up. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, look at that fry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. They must be tiny. Oh, something under that. See that? Something waked under that. Uh, yeah. I don't know what that is. I think it's a bass. Yeah, a little largemouth. That was tight though. Right? A little, yeah, a little largemouth. I don't normally throw a spinning rod of the frog, but we've got such a tiny, filthy frog we're throwing right now. I'd love to show it to you. There you go. I'm throwing the, the little tiny filthy frog. And the only way you can throw that effectively is on spin. So I'm throwing this on a seven foot Guggen Green straight braid. I missed a nice freaking, I don't know, dude. It, it felt like a giant snakehead, but these little bass are keeping us busy in between. Are you entertained? Are you happy now? Dogs behind us will not shut up too. Oh my gosh. These little fish, take them. They just completely missed me. On, I see that dude, you're on. I just broke off. Snakehead, 100% snakehead. I just broke off. I was about to get to the best looking corner of this whole spot. I just broke off my frog. Like I said, we're gonna be chasing fish that breathe air and that have teeth. And that aren't from here. That are from Africa, that are from Asia. That one might have been from Asia. <laughs> Not even from Thailand, matter of fact. So there's three, there's like so many. That was so freaking disgusting. Dude. I can't believe that just happened. Oh my gosh, don't come off, don't come off, girl. don't come off, girl. Don't come off, girl. Oh, she's in the sludge. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy, don't come off. That's a nice one. I'm going in. I'm going in, boys. Oh, let's go, dude. Let's freaking go. Backyard fishing at its finest, dude. This is our buzzer beater bass of the day. We're just heading back to the Airbnb, which by the way, is literally a stone's throw from where we're fishing. Matter of fact, it's right across. That is an incredible way to end this session. Nice little two and a half, three pounder. Just saw him looking, stalking, hunting. Threw that lunker log right in his face and could not resist. Thank you, bud. I mean, how incredible is that? And that right there is exactly why we're here for about a week. Texas is great. 
it's amazing. And it has been good to me in the past, but as of recently, we've been on this struggle bus. Matter of fact, I've been sitting front row seat in the struggle bus for quite some time. So I thought, let's start fresh. It's almost the end of the year. Let's try to end 2022 on a bank. So we booked a ticket. Caleb and I are here for about a week and we thought, let's have no plans. No plans is good plans. We're just gonna come out here, do what we did today. Go canal hop, go pond hop, catch fish in people's backyards. Just places where really you and I, people watching the video right now can go and have a day yourself. Like that was the main goal. And ultimately just showcase why Florida is such an incredible fishery for a freshwater angler. We showed you today. I got out of bed, put water in my face, put the Crocs on, walked out the door, and just like that, we had ourselves a day. Not a dime spent on gas, didn't break, uh, I almost, well, I guess I did break a rod, but that's just me. You guys won't probably break rods when you go out here. Didn't break anything on the boat because we didn't fish off the boat. Literally spent zero dollars and zero cents and had a priceless experience. But this is just day number one. This is not gonna be a series, but ultimately what we're down here to do is to fish and make the most of every single day. Also too, be sure to check out the podcast. We're linking up a lot of creators down here as well. And they'll be on the podcast telling their stories, talking to us about some experiences that they've had over the past couple of uh, months and years as well. But anyway, I appreciate you guys so much for watching this video. Peace and out, signing out. Thank you for watching. And as always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop. I do believe in aliens. I think them are real. I don't think that... You think them hoes are coming? I do. I don't. I think they've probably been here and just checked it out and been like, this place sucks. Yeah, I, I assume that's probably We're going to go back to our, our planet where, you know, True. Sh sh not going... Going downhill, yeah. yeah. <laughs>